Outside of the arts community, Bill Bozzo of Pownall is perhaps best known as a legislator in the Vermont State House. He has represented a district that includes Pownall and Woodford since 2002, and in recent years served as the chairman of the House Commerce Committee. He decided to step down from public office this year after serving eight terms. But there's a whole other side to Mr. Bozzo as well, a visual artist. The combination of artist and politician may not be a common one, but neither is he unique, he said, noting that several other legislators are also artists of one sort or another, either full or part-time when they're not in Montpelier. And while they may call it political science, most would agree there's a lot of art that goes into politicking and lawmaking. Pazzo works in more than one medium, but working with natural wood, mostly found in his own backyard, is a big part of what he does. We went for a walk to see where he gets his material and maybe some of his ideas as well. Uh, this goes around the field, and the part where we're going to do is we're going to go down to where I've been doing most of my work recently. That's what we're, so I'm starting with, this mm -hmm. is, you could say, this is the store. This is where I go. <laughs> Most people make art by going to an art supply store or a hardware store or a steel junkyard. Um, it happens that this is where I go. Cool. So, um, so while I'm doing it, I try to pay attention to what, is, uh, what am I cutting down, where do I actually cut it, and how might that possibly... Uh, translate into something else in that long process. So, and I'll discover things. They may or may not become useful. This is an apple trunk, it's completely hollow. Perhaps that'll end up in something but that was, you know, here on the ground. You know, and then there are other, you know, pieces that are useful. This, you know, very wide branched uh, piece of wood. And um, all of this was a total tangle. Some of these grapevines, and I try to pull them out of the trees, I can't pull them out yet, they aren't ready to go. <laughs> For a while. So what does a buckthorn look like? This is a buckthorn. These are some little ones that I missed. But they come up easily. and they have this very black, shaggy root on it. Uh, and eventually, hey, maybe I'll figure out something to do with this. But whether I do or not, uh, at least I'm improving the forest here you know, for the trees uh, to start with. So it's not really a forestry plan beyond get rid of the invasives and then see what you got. This thing is like, you know, these two trees grew together. This is an old cherry. Here's the maple. And so if I did want to take it out of here, I would ask myself, well, where do I actually want to cut it? Mm. Is this basically uh, a form that would be useful in some other expression? And I don't have an answer to that, but it's up and out of the way at the moment. That is, I just think, you know, where we live and how we live is connecting to our place. You know, the model of Vermont is a working landscape. This is just yet another form of ways to do, uh, to do that. Not for everybody, but for those who choose. A lot of it just comes from trying to pay attention and thinking about what's right here. And what's, not only what's right here, but what's right here that we don't normally pay attention to. After a stroll around his shop or backyard, we talked with him in his studio about his art, how he got started, and the juncture of art and politics. Uh, Makita chalk box, which you know can put it on various angles, and as you can see, I will slowly go through them. And uh, been interested in the places that are forked, and then what you can do with those forks. And then a lot of it is like, well, until it's firewood, let's see what the possibilities are. Here, come on in.
it, it is a, I'd say more of a workshop in a sense. Transforming materials into forms uh, through the filter of ideas. These are white pine that came from when a lot of branches broke off the white pine and a lot of them, the bark was mostly off and I scraped and cleaned this and I've made a few sculptures out of these already. And these are some uh, pieces that are left. Then the other thing I've been doing or looking at a lot is uh, the marks that, I, uh, that pine beetles make when they go into the cambium layer, under the bark, and these are the places where they lay their eggs and then their youngsters, they'll make these little channels um, as they, uh, when the eggs come out and uh, they're seeing food. So it interests me because they're inter they are basically about, from their point of view, they're about shelter and they're about uh, procreation, raising their long, f uh, they're young and they're about food. And those are you know, basic themes. But there's a real variety of them. See this, this one, is, I don't know if you can see it, this one's quite different. Hmm. So for some drawings I've been making, I've been looking at these marks and saying that's a, not here or whatever, uh, but that's a perfectly good model to look at. Or they seem to be very authentic marks and I'd like drawings to be authentic. That came from looking at the various marks such as a red layer and a white layer. And uh, would build, just basically build drawings out of them. I wasn't a child artist. Um, I was not somebody who could draw naturally and thought that uh, was the class artist or anything like along that line. Mm. But I did discover just through the chance of taking courses that I really am a visual person. And uh, so the start for me was uh, looking at a lot of art and taking courses in art history and taking a major in that. Um, but friends said, basically, if you're going to be so interested and want to make a career out of this, you might want to try actually doing it. So I started taking some courses in college and uh, I hit it off with the teacher I had at the time. And it wasn't a, you couldn't take a degree in studio art at that point at that college. And, uh, but he encouraged me and he said, well, when you get through, you ought to go to New York and get a loft. And I did that for a couple of years. Uh, and then the pathway led for me to rural places because I felt that I could um, stay in New York. I could do that. I had an interesting job working in a street academy program in East Harlem with dropout kids and young kids on the block. Um, but I felt that I, uh, it wasn't really, wouldn't be challenging myself very much. I would be trying to fit in or fall into the biggest, largest art world, which was fascinating, respected. And I thought that I ought to uh, test those assumptions and went with a few friends and lived in very, very rural West Virginia for about six or seven years. And uh, I found there that I did continue to make things, and I also knew that for me to change, to move, to uh, go ahead, it came through making um, my artwork, and I knew my artwork would go somewhere, so my artwork would go there, so I would go to that place, and that was happened. So I came, ended up in Bennington because of a friend who was teaching video, the very first video courses at Bennington College. Uh, that, maybe not the very first, but very early, this would be in about mid-70s or so, and it was like big cameras and all of that equipment. Um, and then uh, I just uh, kept doing it, but I also realized along the way that if you really care about something and you do something, uh, it makes sense to try to do it so that other people can too if they so choose. So that is always said, well, there ought to be a, uh, you know, a public policy part, if you will. So I became very involved in any number along the way of uh, arts organizations. Some were artist driven and then they became more along the line of uh, general policy uh, driven, such as the Vermont Arts Council, New England Foundation for the Arts. Uh, National Assembly of State Art Associations. 
and all of that gave me a certain grounding in, in uh, public policy and in meetings. Uh, they were all not-for-profits, uh, but they were not-for-profits that were really engaged in public policy on behalf of groups of people. So that must have sparked the initial interest then in perhaps running for public office at some point. I never had a um, overt interest. Um, I did a lot of projects and many exhibitions for many years. And it just so happened in 2002 election that I did not have any uh, uh, exhibitions, contracts, uh, commissions lined up in front of me. And uh, I, uh, I was asked by uh, people you know, in town and elsewhere, would I consider uh, you know, running for office? And I thought that would be a, a good thing to do and for a variety of reasons. I really felt that by uh, putting some uh, my energy and t sense of teamwork, because I've been doing a lot of collaborations, uh, my creativity, and then over time my experience into it, uh, it stood to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, make things better, I, I would hope. Uh, but nobody can control all of that, so right. that's up to others to judge. But it felt to me very much is that the skill set that, that came from everything I'd did, done up till then applied I mean, pretty darn well to my work in committee room, of, of, uh, as I became chair of getting people to work together to go from just the mere scratch of an idea to an actual document, actually, you could call it a, uh, a work. If it's a work of policy, work of art, or whatever, the skill set applied and was useful. Um, and uh, so I think that's been the fit and that's been how it goes. I think there is a sense of a cultural understanding or, or thought or bias about what an artist is or is not. That uh, thinking that way tells you more about what people think of artists than what they think of uh, legislatures. Because in a citizen legislature, every skill set is applicable. Now, I, I think there probably are parts of artists that don't apply very well, just as there are probably parts of law, medicine, um, construction, etc., that don't apply uh, very well. But some of it does. And um, I'm certainly not the, you know, I, I think most people seek the arts for a certain amount of their of relief, escape, and, and instead of perhaps realism, so I can see why that thought would follow. But they lose sight of the fact that it's really small business because you have to source it, you have to um, make it, you have to market it, you have to record it, you have to uh, do all of the various steps that a business has to do to be successful. You have to find your own niche. You have to distinguish yourself in a very competitive marketplace. Um, these are all you know, real basics. Uh, aside from that, I think I just have an interest in um, what I don't know and applying myself. I never thought commerce would be my fit. I started out on agriculture. I, used to joke and say it's the only committee with the word culture in its name, and that was, you know, fun. But uh, commerce turned out to be a good fit because a lot of my interest is about, um, you know, what are the possibilities? What could we do together? Now you're into community building, now you're into economic development, and I was early on asked to chair the Rural Economic Development uh, Working uh, Group and that uh, Gay Symington started. And that was a great learning for me and a whole set of legislators, and there we established things. So we really need to s start beating the drum on things such as forestry. That uh, At that point, forestry didn't have a home in the legislature. And we worked really hard and got forestry, production forestry, not um, environmental resource forestry, onto the door of the Ag Committee. And that was a big step. We also took some of the first steps in uh, insisting that telecom uh, goes beyond uh, our major metropolitan areas, and metropolitan or large town areas, Burlington, et cetera, uh, just where Comcast could go and uh, DSL could go to pick up bodies of people, that people needed to communicate no matter how far apart they were in order for rural economic development. Those are just two examples. 
Okay. Bill Bozzo may be leaving the legislature, but it's unlikely he'll be slowing down much. An exhibition of his work at the Bennington Museum just ended after a three-and-a-half-month-long run, and now there may be more time for exploring the details of wood and creating more pieces of art. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.